Hey everybody, uh, as uh, many of you know, uh, we're doing a few little uh, uh, vignettes of, of places around Prince Edward Island that are mentioned in the song Portugal or PEI. And uh, Jimmy really, really wanted to come and visit Prince Edward Island, and I so wanted to show him around, especially to the places, and, and uh, incorporate some of the things mentioned in the song. We've already been to Singing Sands, and we were sailing on Malpec Bay with Kirsten Neuschaefer. And today, uh, we are so fortunate because uh, there's talk about oysters and wine in the song, and we have PEI's premier oyster man, Robert Pendergast, with us here. Thank you. <laughs> he's, uh, he's awesome. He knows everything about oysters, and, and he's uh, present at all kinds of events on Prince Edward Island. And we're so fortunate to have him here today and tell us a couple of things about oysters. He's also a heck of a songwriter and musician and a great singer. Maybe we might even uh, coax a song on him a little bit later. But uh, Robert Pendergast, everybody. Uh, Thanks. What Appreciate pleasure. it. What a pleasure to have you here. It's great to and be I, here. I so wish Jimmy was here meeting you as well, but I'm hoping that he's here. Yeah, as I, never, I never ever even thought of it before, but it would, be, it would be great to meet a guy like that that has so many different experiences to talk about. And, he told us about a lot of stuff in songs. He did. Nice. But uh, now we have to just make our own interpretation. Yeah. I know he would have loved to have met, met you. Uh, when I met him in Nova Scotia, we, we had lobster, or lobster, and I was showing him the, the, you know, the, the Cape Breton and the PEI way of opening lobster claws, and he, he so enjoyed that. Right. So, uh, so today we're going we're gonna to dig into the oysters, PEI oysters, uh, yeah. a little bit, and uh, show a few tricks of the trade. Sounds great. Cool. I'm into it. Maybe Robert can tell us just a little bit about the history of oysters on Prince Edward Island. Yeah, well, one thing about Prince Edward Island is that, uh, you know, you see it in the art from around here, you hear it in the songs from around here. There's a lot of water. It's not the ocean water and the, and the gulf and the strait that's so important, it's all the rivers and all the bays. And if you want to get really fancy with, say, uh, the estuary, and that's where oysters thrive, that's where they reproduce, and so PEI, it's our luck that that was a great place for oysters to grow. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. here we are with some great oysters and, and it's, a, it's an industry that's thriving and we're doing our best to try to show people good oysters and then sometimes keep a few secrets so that they don't go uh, to all the visitors. Yeah. We have a few ourselves. <laughs> it's crazy, you know, you see Malpec oysters all over the world. No matter where you go, you can see PEI mussels, Malpec oysters. Yeah, and, uh, there's so it's been a lot of, a lot, a lot of travel, oysters, that traveled more than I have and maybe even more than you have. Yeah, no doubt. So uh, <clears throat> why don't you uh, open a few and we'll see where yeah. it goes. Yeah. Often, well, when I was learning how to do it, what I realized was I, I, I needed to take the traditional knife and I needed to kind of shave down the front of it to make it more of a point and a little bit thinner. Yeah. And especially I think with the Malpec oysters because the smaller, the medium, the large ones, they all kind of have the same they still have the same kind of a thin gap at the back, mm -hmm. so we call this the hinge because the oysters open a bit this way. Mm -hmm. And this, I guess, I would call the lip of the oyster. And there are lots of people who open it in hand. The way I do it is, you know, it's a little bit more kind of, kind of just kind of propped up on a cloth or on a board. Yeah. And uh, it's nice to have that there so it doesn't slip. Mm -hmm. I'd never put my hand there because the hand is pretty important, but the fingers, well, you know, yeah. a little cut here or there, no big deal. And so that, that little tip of the knife is going to just go in, and I'm kind of wiggling it a little bit just, just to feel it go between the shells. And when it, once I do that, I clean off the tip, I kind of wedge my finger in a little bit, and I'll get back in underneath. And then I kind of wiggle it and slide it along the top shell. My goal is to keep it as clean as possible. I don't want to lose too much meat. Right. And, you know, I've been able to do it pretty fast in the past, but I think that the more important thing is opening oysters for people clean and so when I've done it in a contest in the past I was very fast but sometimes a bit messy. Right. I think that my nickname was the hammer because yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> sometimes it looked like I'd open them with a the hammer. So I like to open them this way. This is a lot more kind of a preferred method. Right. There we go. Okay. Salty oyster and a little bit sweet they say. 
These are amazing. And, and this is a good time of year for oysters, isn't it? Oh yeah. Well, uh, once once the summer goes by, the summer they're they're a little thin, a little salty because there's more liquor and a little less meat. They're more uh, liquor. Yeah. They're just oyster liquor is what we call the liquid in there. And I think even on PI here, uh, you know. Could be anybody from right down at the shore to the fanciest chef, but everybody would say oyster liquor. Oyster liquor. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. To Jimmy. Oysters. Mmm. That's a beautiful oyster. Yeah, they're good. Mm. Yeah, so most of the time you're just uh, looking for something with a nice with a nice shape to it and when you, when you pick it up. For the size, it's always nice if it feels a bit heavy. Yeah. And there's a tradition of eating oysters. I think, you know, for a lot of the time, and it was the same. It was the same down in the states. It, it, it was something that anybody could have. The people who were bringing it into cities on the train and in barrels of seaweed and ice and stuff, you know, they were paying something for it. But the people who lived close by where oysters were around New York City, they say it was built on oysters. Is that yeah, right? the poor people, they could all eat oysters. Yeah. Well, in the song Portugal or PEI, we have someone singing a fado song, singing a Portuguese song, but they're, uh, they're standing out on the sandbar. Now, we're in the month of October. Uh, if, we, if it was July, Robert, I'll, I'll get you out on the sandbar. We'll do it think, next summer. <laughs> I think since we're in the month of October, we'll have him sing just a little bit of Portuguese here at the oyster table. How about it? Just a little something I learned from my guys, my fish suppliers in Toronto, in Little Portugal, on, a, on an afternoon where we all went out for lunch, right before I left town. They wanted to take me out, and I had to leave early because things were getting messy. <laughs> <laughs> singing from uh, Premier Oyster Shocker on Prince Edward Island, Mr. Bob of Pentecast. <laughs> Thanks. Cool.
<laughs> Afternoon music. <laughs> We're depending for gas. I'll see. You. Thank you so much for thank you, man. Awesome. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Uh, oyster and wine on Prince Edward Island, and a little bit of Portuguese singing as well. Uh, all part of the <laughs> all part of the song Portugal or PEI. Where are we going next? I don't know. Maybe a pub on PEI. Who knows? See ya soon. <laughs>